So I've been trying to come up with new ideas for what to do for this video for a while now, and I think I finally figured it out. But first, um, there's 1,000 new subscribers. We're at 2K now. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I know that for a lot of people that doesn't seem like a lot, but to me, I picture like 2,000 people in a room and I'm like, God damn, that's a lot of people. So thank you for subscribing. If you're new here and you don't know what the channel's about, uh, I'm a filmmaker and this is a channel based on filmmaking, but I also like to incorporate uh, music into it and I do a lot of work with tattoo artists as well. So uh, every now and again, we get some tattoo related content. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to come up with things to film yourself doing that are actually interesting and useful to others, uh, especially in isolation, which is kind of where we're at right now. I see a lot of other creators really pumping out content, which is awesome. Um, but I'm a little bit newer to the platform and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to kind of find my way into it and do things that not everyone has done already. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you how to film your own guitar playthroughs, guitar covers, or more broadly, just, you know, vocal covers, drum covers, whatever. Just really film yourself playing an instrument. Uh, it is gonna be more geared towards guitar because that's what I do. I'm gonna show you some angles that you can use and maybe walk you through a little bit of the gear that you can use as well. Um, right out there though, you don't really need the crazy camera setup. It's definitely gonna help and I'm gonna get into that all a little bit later. Um, you can totally do this with your phone, especially if you have a newer phone, but I'm gonna run you through what I think is one of the better setups for it. If you're trying to take it really seriously, and especially if you're doing playthroughs, uh, I would actually recommend using a real camera. But anyways, I gotta trim my beard. That's what we're doing today. Okay, so there's a few things we need to talk about when we're talking about how to film yourself. One, we're gonna need to go over gear. Second, we're gonna need to go over lighting, which I mean is part of gear. But thirdly, we need to go over angles. And then the last thing is uh, actually recording yourself, but I don't think I'm the authority on that. So I will leave that to other YouTube channels. If I find a good video, I'll put it in the description box below. But let's get into it, starting with gear. Okay, so sort of the obvious stuff that you need. You need a guitar or whatever instrument you're playing and you need a spot to play it. Um, this is generally where I do my playthroughs and yeah, I'm not really gonna go over the like music side of gear and recording equipment. There, Like I said, there's other YouTubers that will go over that a lot better than I can. We're just focusing on the filmmaking aspect of it. Okay, so the first and most important thing is the camera that you're gonna use. Now, if you already own a camera, um, this is obviously better, but if you don't, I have two recommendations for you. The better of the two, I would say, is the Sony a6500. Now, this is not me saying that because I own a Sony. I own the Sony a7 III. Um, I think that is a little bit overkill for just somebody that wants to do guitar covers. Um, but if you're looking for 4K quality and uh, good colors and everything like that. Uh, the Sony a6500 is a really great choice and the lens that I would pair that with um, would be the Sony SEL 20 f 2.8 E-mount lens uh, that clocks in around $348 new and the camera body clocks in around 800 if you just get the body. Do not get just the kit lens with it. Um, it's not worth it and there's a good chance if you buy a camera that you might end up using it for other stuff and just trust me you don't want kit lenses they're usually pretty garbage so that's one of the options the other option and this is the the cheaper of the two i don't think that you get 4k out of it um, but you could always get like the canon rebel t3i um, and shoot in like 1080 which which is fine that's a completely acceptable resolution but we are pushing 1080 out, it seems like, slowly, as we're in 2020, moving forward. Um, 
Yeah, and then the lens that you could pair with that would be the Canon EFS 24mm f2.8, which comes around uh, $129. I don't remember how much the, the T3i costs, but you can get them for, for pretty cheap nowadays. Um, that is a great starter camera sort of all around, especially for pictures, um, but we're not really getting into that too much. Now, our other option, if you're completely unwilling to buy a camera, which is understandable, is you can totally use your phone. Um, nowadays, these phones that people have are pretty crazy. Um, this is the Galaxy S20 Plus. It shoots in 4K. It might shoot in 8K. I can't remember. I know that the, uh, the S20 Ultra does shoot in 8K, um, which is a higher resolution than the Sony a7 III shoots in. Um, but I, I think that's a little bit overkill. But yeah, like you could totally use like a newer smartphone or even down probably to like the iPhone 8. That probably still shoots 4K, I think. Um, you would just need to get a tripod for um, your cam or for your smartphone instead of for your camera, which does lead me into the next point is you need a tripod. You don't need the most amazing, incredible tripod. I'll throw a link in the description to like a cheap one and then I'll throw a link in the description to what I use, which is the Vanguard Tracker 2. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty basic setup, really, is all you need is a camera, a lens, tripod. I like to have a microphone on it um, because I like to sync up the audio of me actually playing um, to then the recording of the guitar or whatever instrument I'm playing uh, on my computer or through the DAW or whatever. Lighting makes a really, really big difference in a scene. So I'm gonna go over to where I do my playthroughs and I'm gonna show you what a difference different lighting will have. Okay, so I figured the best way to kind of explain this is to actually show you. So this is probably the worst way to light a guitar playthrough. This is just the one light I have in my apartment above me, like directly above me. The windows closed. Uh, and then the guitar and no other lighting. This looks absolutely horrible and this is not how you should light your playthroughs at all. So don't make this mistake. It may look a little bit better on a smartphone um, than a DSLR camera, but I digress. This is the opposite of what you want. Now you might say, let's open a window and uh, we'll keep the light on and that'll give us a little bit more light. And again, this doesn't really look good. This doesn't make for a good playthrough. Um, there's heavier shadows all around me. There's no visual interest on me or the guitar. Um, it's, it's just not really gonna stand out. So this leads us to where we actually should be, which is we wanna set up some lights. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I'm recording this on my phone right now, so you can see the camera. This is with absolutely no light, windows closed, all the lights off, besides um, these lights right here. Now what we're gonna do is I've got this big Westcott Basics um, Octabox. There's two of them that come in the set. I'm just gonna be using one today. And we're just gonna turn that on, and you can see what a difference that makes in the image already. Now. The reason that we might use something like this is because it's a big, soft, diffused light. And that is what we want for our main, it's called a key light. Okay, so now what we have is just one key light, a big, soft, diffused key light. This is already better than both of our other two options. You can see this is already more visually interesting. Now I wouldn't necessarily stop here, though you can because Getting all this sort of stuff, it might get a little bit too expensive for you, um, especially if you don't have a camera and you've, you've bought some of this other gear. Um, you know, we're getting into the like thousands of dollars kind of range. Um, but if you have it, you might as well use it. Or if you only need to get lights, then you should probably just start there. So we have our main key light. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add another one. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so I'm on my phone again. Now what we're adding here is an RGB light. You can see the difference that that made a little bit on the camera. Now I shoot on a very flat color profile, so it's not necessarily gonna show up right away. 
And I'm going to show you what that looks like actually sitting there. Okay, now you can see we're looking a little bit better. There's some more color contrast. It's I got a red casting against the wall, and we're looking pretty good. And again, you could probably stop here if you wanted to, but I'm a big fan of three-point lighting. So right now we have our main key light, then we have an accent light, and then we're going to do a rim light on the back of this really to separate me from the background. Okay, so now what we have is our main key light, which is on our left-hand side, or right-hand side, doesn't really matter. Then we have our accent light, and then we have our rim light over there. So this creates a much fuller picture, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so now we have three light sources. We have our main key light, we have our fill light, and we have our rim light. So a light behind me, and then a light on either side. Um, the main key light is pretty soft, and then our fill light is again, just giving a little bit of that color contrast, and then the rim light behind me is to create separation on the background. Now, my fill light and my rim light are on opposite ends of the color spectrum, so I have pink, and I have like a light blue. Um, and this is generally what you wanna do with your fill light and your rim light, is you do wanna create some separation. Um, and yeah, now we get to go into camera angles. Right now, we're just head on, uh, which is fine. It allows the viewer to see the whole guitar and most of you. Uh, and again, this is gonna be why you want a wide angle lens. This is cropped into about 35 millimeters right now, which is probably not quite wide enough. But anyways, um, they can see the whole guitar, they can see you, and this is a decent place to start. But if you do the whole playthrough like this, it's not gonna be very visually interesting to watch. And unless someone's watching to learn how to play the song themselves and they just like that one consistent angle, uh, you're gonna be you're gonna want to be a little bit more creative than that. So Yeah, I'm gonna show you some other angles that you can use. Okay, so right now I have the camera set down the tripod with the legs all the way down We still have our fill light and all that sort of stuff going on and this will be angled up at me So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. It's a great time to show this strumming angle So say you're doing string skipping or you know something more complicated on on the right hand um, it's a great time to use this angle, otherwise you can just use it to break it up. And the next angle that we'll be doing is a little bit off-center and pretty close. Now this is going to be good for when you're doing something more complicated with your left hand. So as you can see, we're pretty close up on the hand here. Um, and you know, this is just for whatever part of the riff you're playing that you think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, just bring it in a little bit closer so that they can see what you're playing. Like. Obviously there's plenty of other angles that you guys can use um, in your guitar playthroughs, but I figured I'd just show you a couple so that you can just kind of at least bounce through those three. Um, other angles that I could see somebody using is like shooting down the headstock or completely on the other side of it, um, you know, towards the back end of the body and just using a really shallow depth of field. Um, there's lots of really great options that you can do, um, but I just wanted to give you guys a nice little, little push off that ledge there. Hopefully it helped. If it did and you decide to make a guitar playthrough using any of the tips that I gave out today, um, Please drop a comment or message me on Instagram at Nevermore Visuals. Um, anything really, I would really love to see it. And if this was helpful, please let me know. If you want more stuff like this, I would love to. Um, maybe one of the things that I can do after um, this whole situation is over is, um, you know, when I film a guitar playthrough, I can show you how, as a filmmaker, you can film someone else playing guitar because that's a totally different world. You can use gimbals tripods, handheld, lots of different movements that you can work through and you can get a little bit more into set design. Whereas this video was much more based around someone that, you know, they've got their bedroom and that's sort of like the only space that they can use. They don't have a ton of it and just three angles that they can use with a little bit of lights to set something up that, you know, looks like a professional quality playthrough or guitar cover. Just something to set them apart. All right, so that's gonna be all from me today. 
If you liked it, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. If you have something to add or you have any questions, feel free to comment them. Um, and if you want more tips like this and you want to see more videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.